Dr. Zeb Maletsky is from Boston. Come on up, Zeb. He is from Boston. He is in New York, and he drove up here because when I was saying, listen, we're beaconing Boston, we're going to be doing something different, he said, oh no, I have a story to tell about Boston. I have a Boston that I want to make visible. So with that, Zeb. Um, I think the first thing that I have to do is to thank Malia. Uh, thank you for this, Malia, for bringing all these wonderful people together, for bringing me out here, and for inviting me, and for the sponsors of this event, too, uh, the Boston Globe, Harvard University, uh, Mass General, and MIT. Not a bad list. Um, I'm feeling good about it, and I'm just glad to be here. Um, as Malia said, I uh, did grow up in Boston. Um, and I do no longer live in Boston, which is why that's sort of like relevant, I guess, because I'm sure there's quite a few people here who did. Um, and so I am a professor. I uh, went to the Boston Public Schools. I never went to school outside of Roxbury. Um, and I went to the Trotter, the Wheatley, which is, I don't think, no longer there, John D. O'Brien. Um, and I'll come back to that a little later. Um, but. I would like a chance to speak to everyone today about basically what I've been working on as a scholar. Um, when Malia called me to do this, I said, and I have been, you know, having this conversation with myself for quite some time, um, you came from Boston. Good. You made it. You survived. Um, you won an award? You know, this whole room is full of people from Boston. Um, but, uh, I had kind of an interesting journey. I grew up in the post-busing era of Boston, as I call it. Um, I came of age at a time in a school that was actually established and built to address those years. And I'm seeing some folks in the audience who maybe didn't know what I'm talking about when I talk about those years. Um, and, uh, you know, having a chance to go to those schools and come up through that system uh, was an interesting thing for a mixed race guy. I'm coming from a background of my mother's African American, my father's Jewish, um, which is, you're like, that's not a race. Um, <laughs> get it together up there, ethnic studies guy. Uh, you wanted to do this and talk about being professorial, and now you got that wrong. But, uh, and a kind of important thing to, to figure out in this city. Uh, when you understand neighborhoods like Grove Hall, you understand Dorchester and some of the changeovers that happen. Um, and so basically like that, you know, as you know when you're a professor, it's publish or perish. You have to write a book. Uh, you're supposed to write stuff. They're like, oh really? You're just going to teach every day? And you know, great, but you have to publish at least uh, in my school at Stony Brook, which is in Long Island. Um, and so I'm writing about those years. Uh, I'm writing about actually the years that led up to the years we talk about called busing. There's some people in this audience who are probably too young to even know what that is, what we are referring to. And then there's also some newer Bostonians who just may not know some of that story yet. And so I looked at my little situation. You went to UMass Amherst. That's how Bostonian I am. Like I was like, it's like, is, do you need a passport to go to Amherst? <laughs> Like, I, will I be able to get home like when I want to and so um, Yeah, it's real, it's real, we'd stick close. And so, you know, I had a nice chance to work with some folks there who, who taught me about, who came out themselves out of the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Power Movement, um, and who were movement veterans who basically instructed all of us, and I'm not, you know, the only one, who uh, came through that system. And so all the time I was thinking, wow, as I learn about the South, as I learn about the Civil Rights Movement, that doesn't remind me just of Birmingham, it doesn't remind me only of, Bur of Alabama, it doesn't remind me only of Montgomery, that reminds me of my good old beautiful loving hometown of Boston, Massachusetts. Why, I said to myself, this is the North, this is the home of abolition, the abolitionist movement started in Boston. You went to the William Monroe Trotter School. We sang the Negro National Anthem every day with people with names like Mrs. Holland and Mr. Pilot, who were folks that you know were just master teachers. 
This is the home of education, Boston, Massachusetts. Let me jump way, way ahead and say that what it led me to realize is that we had just as much of a civil rights movement here in Boston, Massachusetts that was organic to the North and yet also tied to what was happening in the South. Organizations, if you know, like the Northern Student Movement, if that name means anything to anyone. The, what they used to call uh, SNCC North. Freedom North, up South. Choose your metaphor, but Boston has its own interesting story. I used to call it the Deep North. <laughs> it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to get a laugh out of a history joke. I mean, I know, but, Boston. but this is Boston. This, thank you. I'm so glad to be here right now. Like, you don't understand. I've been working on this a long time. I have kids. Like, they haven't seen me. Like, I'm working on this stuff. Uh, but, you know, for in ways large and small, it makes sense that Boston's civil rights struggle would be defined by education. <laughs> Doesn't it? We wondered, why us? Why did it end up like this in Boston and how destructive and hard it was for the city if you were from Charlestown, if you were from South Boston, if you were from you know, East Boston, if you were from Jamaica Plain like I was, if you read All Souls, you knew that the parishes meant something in JP that was all Irish. People migrate and move around this city. And so basically, you know, we have the first public schools in the city, uh, the Boston Latin School the first public libraries for African Americans who, remember it was once illegal to learn how to read and write if you were black in this country. So if you're in a city that has some of the best schools in the nation, leading, Latin is a feeder school to Harvard, then the issue of education is naturally going to be something that's a focus. Uh, people moved up here so that they could send their kids to school. The jobs were not as good as they promised, but here anyway. This was the home of abolition. Of course, this will be the place where a black man has a fairer chance in America because if this is the place that ended slavery, and it is, right? William Lloyd Garrison holding the burning the copy of the Constitution on the steps of the state house. So this is what I've been studying and working on. I remember those years of busing. I grew up in it, and as I mentioned before, I do happen to be uh, from an interracial background, inter-ex. I need to, you know, testify, and I thank you for listening to, to that story. I was just one of those people who was nurtured, pushed along by the very rich and long-standing and important African-American community that is here and taking roots in with places like names with Roxbury, Dorchester, the South End. And at the same time, I had a chance to appreciate and evaluate the difficulties that certain groups have when they're thrown together. The Irish who were looked down once by the English of this city and themselves only took City Hall like late in the 19th century. And then the Italians who came in. And so African Americans are scanning the landscape and they're saying, what can we do? Where do we get the most hurt? There's a book called Death at an Early Age that was, that was written a, a while back. Uh, and by a, 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 some amazing sociologists. And so there are men and women, grown African-American men and women to this day, walking around this city, working in this city, living in this city, who carry some of the hurt that happened in some of those classrooms. Being sent to detention, being told you, don't, you can't learn, being told that you're dumb. And the thing is, you might have had a hard time in school because this is New England. The Catholic nuns will slap your hand with a ruler faster than you could shake a stick at. But, but if you graduate high school and you cannot read, what is the fastest way to, to destroy the will of a people is that as a child. And so we had to fight that fight in the schools. And so I just wanted to mention that, that a lot of my research has taught me, it brought me to some of these things. Martin Luther King comes to speak in Boston in 1965. He addressed uh, the great court. He addressed uh, 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 Beacon Hill. And don't forget that this city has important ties for Martin Luther King. He met Coretta Scott King here. Listen, any man who are married in this room? He met Coretta Scott King in Boston. So, 
Thank you. We got one father up in there. Yeah. yeah. And so he, Boston had a special place in his heart. And I just wanted to make this point that once the school desegregation movement under people with names like Ruth Batson begins, uh, uh, Elma Lewis and so many other legends that came before to make that happen, it was a planned thing. The NAACP had been planning to work on the Boston desegregation thing since a case called Roberts versus the city of Boston, 1849. I know this, people know this. Because Roberts starts the, that, that schools, education on the two bookends, of the black struggle here in Boston, Massachusetts. The black Yankee struggle, the black Cape Verdean struggle, the black Puerto Rican struggle, the black African American struggle, all the, this diasporic focus. It goes from there to busing and it returns back to that whole, that thing. Why? Because Roberts was cited in a case called Plessy versus Ferguson. Jim Crow does not only have roots in the South, Jim Crow, Although we didn't call it that, and separate but equal, they did call it that. Actually did start in Boston. And there's no shame in that. I loved Boston when the neo-Nazis came here, what you guys did. I was watching from New York on Facebook. Boston strong. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here.